triangles is the way to go, so it's not really an identity issue anymore. So, we want to take this thing and simplify it and write it in terms of sines and cosines and see how simple we can get. Because that's the gist of what we do when we're doing identities. If this were an identity, we would have it equal to something else, and we'd be aiming to get to what the other side looked like. So, suggestions for rewriting this thing. So I have the 2 plus the tangent squared of x over secant squared of x <coughs> minus 1. So if I'm rewriting it in terms of sines and cosines, what should I be getting rid of? I should change my tangent and I should be changing my secant. All right, so let's do that. This will then become 2 plus, well, if I change my tangent, what will it become? So the tangent is the sine of x divided by the cosine of x. Now this tangent was squared. So I either have the option of squaring the whole thing, or if I square a fraction, it's the same thing as squaring the numerator and also squaring the denominator. Usually it's easier if we do it that way in terms of making things simpler. So I square my numerator and I square my denominator. Now I'm going to divide by what? One over cosine squared of x, and let's not forget that I still have this minus 1 out there. Now I'm supposed to simplify it. When I have fractions divided by fractions, that's not simple. Those are called complex fractions. Suggestions? By the way, if you don't like fractions, you need to get really used to using them anyway, because a lot of this is getting common denominators and multiplying and dividing fractions. And doing the simplification parts. Because those are tangents and stuff. Well, let's look at the top. I have a number plus a fraction. Any suggestions for how to deal with a number plus a fraction? Get a common denominator. For just the top, what would the common denominator be? Cosine squared of x would be the most easy common denominator. So, I will have 2 cosine squared of x divided by the cosine of x, squared of x. That's just my 2 plus a sine squared of x divided by a cosine squared of x. That's getting my common denominator. I still have this big denominator of 1 over the cosine squared of x, and I still have this minus 1. Now, when I put the two fractions in my numerator together, I get 2 cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x divided by cosine, what? Forgot my one over. Oh no, I'm still ahead. Yeah. Cosine squared of x, I was ahead of myself in my thinking. Over one over cosine squared of x, still minus one. Now what? Multiply what? So basically you're telling me I should divide the numerator by the denominator. Yeah. So I should actually do this division. And remember when I divide one fraction by another, it's the same thing as multiplying the numerator by the multiplicative inverse of the denominator. So this is going to be, when I work it out, is 2 cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x over cosine squared of x times cosine squared of x over 1, and then that's still all minus 1. So that you'll see step by step what I'm doing. By the way, if you were to skip this step, for instance, to get to here, and skip this step to get to this thing, what happens when I do that multiplication? What do I end up with? Yeah, the cosine squared of x and the numerator and the denominator become 1, so I'm left with just 2 cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x, and then that minus 1. Yep. All right. So when you get together, you want to go back and you can make cosine squared x plus sine x plus 1. Well, 
be sine squared. And yeah, that's really tempting. So she's noticing that it would be really nice if I had cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x, and this darn two is in the way. Well, this just means I have two of these. So I can say this is cosine squared of x plus another cosine squared of x plus the sine squared of x minus 1. So I just broke this two of these up into their two pieces. Now you want to take this thing. That's what she was wanting to get rid of. Cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x, according to the Pythagorean identity, is always 1. So this then becomes cosine squared of x plus 1 minus 1, which simplifies to cosine squared of x. It went from looking like a big mess to something that's not so bad. That's the way most of your trig identities will work. Now, how would this look in web work? Well, in web work, the chances are it would have had a side that looks like this, and then it would have said this equals f of x squared. And you're supposed to find out what f of x is. Well, what is f of x? f of x means that we're looking for something that's a function in x, and then we want to square it. Well, when we worked it through, we got down to what function that we then squared? We got down to cosine of x. So the answer would have been that f of x was equal to cosine of x because the square part was given in the problem. This is how web work works in terms of trying to get you to simplify things. They say, here's where you start. Work your way through and get as close as you can to something that looks like this. If it gives you a function like this one does, that means chances are it's going to be a sine of x or a cosine of x or a tangent of x or something that's a function of x. If it gives you a letter, then chances are what it's talking about is, um, I'm going to find one, it's looking for numbers. So let's look at a couple of problems.